Dan Sterling is an American screenwriter. Dan was spending time with his friends that day. They were talking about a variety of topics. Finally, their conversation reached Bin Laden. Bin Laden was not dead at that time. It was all of a sudden that one of Dan's friends came up with an idea. Suppose a journalist gets a chance to interview Osama Bin Laden. How would he use it? Would he just take the interview? Or would he kill Bin Laden? This idea of his friend created an excitement in Dan. He thought what it would be like to have a movie in this setting. After all the discussions, the friends left, but their idea remained with Dan. On the very night, he decided that this is the background of his next film. Dan began thinking of writing a screenplay. He decided to write the script as a comedy film. But the question arose as to who would do the interview. He realized that any way he can make a good movie only with the inspiration of a real-life character. But no matter how much he thought, he had no idea who it was. Bin Laden could not be used because movies about Middle East dictators had already been made. That's why Dan realized that he wanted a notorious world leader. He searched for it, and very soon, he got an answer. He started writing the story as a dictator of an imaginary country because it was cinema. The dictator was given an imaginary name. After a few days, the script was completed. Then Dan got a chance to discuss the script with Sony Picture executives. They listened fully to the script, and they liked it. But they told a suggestion to Dan. We like the script, but instead of the dictator of this fictional country, should we use the real North Korean dictator? Dan could not believe their question. At first, he felt a little scared because he did not know the consequences of using the name of a ruler in his film as well as in the film about the assassination of that ruler. He knew only one thing. What makes a movie more interesting than a fictional character is the real-life character. So at the suggestion of Sony Pictures, Dan changed the name of the character in his screenplay. The shooting of the movie has started. Trailers and posters started coming out after the shooting. All of the trailers used the real name of the North Korean leader. Because of it, the news about the movie spread all over the world. The news reached North Korea as well. The U.S. government then received a letter from the North Korean government. By letting a film release like this, you are promoting terrorism. Therefore, the U.S. government should block the release of the film. The film should be banned. But the U.S. government did not take North Korea's views seriously. They did not block the release of the film. And Sony decided to release the movie on December 17, 2014. The film was about to be screened in several theaters in the United States. The movie was pre-booked by many people as it was the Christmas season. But on the day of the release, something strange happened. The poster of the movie has been removed from all the theaters. That movie was not released then. Not only that, the movie was never released in theaters. The main reason for not releasing was the theater owners themselves. The theater owners have categorically stated that the movie will not be shown in theaters. They were terribly afraid of something.
Sony Pictures' head office is located in California. There are a lot of people working there. That was Monday. All employees returned to work after the weekend. Suddenly, it caught the attention of an employee. Something is appearing on his computer screen. It is an image. As soon as the employee saw it, he started to get scared. He went on to tell other employees about this. But then, only the real fear awoke in him. The same image comes into all the computers in the office. They realized that their corporate network had been hacked. Below the image, there were five links. They opened it and looked. They could not believe it. It contained folders containing several details of the company. It's the salaries of executives, the salaries of film artists, personal emails, gossip, things that no company wants the outside world to know. Apart from all this, there were some Sony movies that were not released. Their threat was that if they did not do what they were told, all this would spread to the outside world. But no one really could understand what the hackers really meant. The FBI has launched an investigation into the case. They realized that they had somehow gotten into their malware company via an email. But FBI also didn't understand why they were doing this. The incident soon spread all over the world. In the meantime, some rumors started circulating. All that led to the movie, The Interview. Some media outlets have suggested that North Korea may be doing this to prevent the film's release. There was such a talk among the people as well, but they were all remaining just as rumors. Until that one day, Four days later, hackers sent a new message to Sony. In fact, the message did not reach Sony alone. It reached most theaters in the United States. The message was the same. It's about the movie, The Interview. The message was that if it was shown in a movie theater, no one who saw it would go home alive. But Sony Pictures did not take this message seriously. They decided to show it in theaters. But their decision led to a huge loss. Within a few days, the hackers sent the information they had collected to the media. But the problem did not end there. They uploaded five Sony's unreleased movies on various piracy sites. These movies were downloaded by millions of people. Sony lost millions of dollars due to this decision. But despite all these problems and losses, Sony decided to release the picture in cinemas because it was a Christmas release. They knew that with the release of this film, it would be possible to make up for all these losses to a certain extent. But even there, Sony got lost. The theater owners were against the release of the film. This is because of the threat of hackers. But there was a bigger reason apart from that. That was two and a half years ago. An attack took place inside a theater in Colorado during the movie screening. The bomber struck shortly after noon in front of a police station. The attack killed 12 people and injured 70 others. This event had not faded from the theater owners. Sony has realized that the movie will not be released in theaters anyway. Later, they released it on several online platforms. Sony Pictures was not ready to let the hackers go free as they had suffered so much loss. In addition to FBI, Sony has also handed over the case to several private agencies. But no matter how much they searched, they could not find out who they were. All they found was that an unknown hacking group was behind it. The name of the group was Lazarus. Based on the evidence, they were based 
in North Korea. Earlier, they had hacked into several banks. Even after the Sony hacking, they hacked a bank, and the stolen sum from the bank was $81 million. 